Tier Elements are taking the meta by storm, and not only are we going to show you some of the basic combos of this deck, but I'm going to show you how you guys can deck build against it, and of course, how to side deck as well. But before we get into all that, please go grab yourself a cup of coffee or something, that way you guys can sit down and tune in. Let's do this. All right, so before hopping into some of the combos, I just wanted to show you a very basic, straightforward deck list that, again, plus or minus a few cards, people are gonna be running for the most part. There are some other tech choices people are running. Some people go the hand trap route, some people prefer the board breaker, kind of like what this list is doing right now. Some questionable things would be whether or not you play Shadal Beast to give you access to Winda, and of course, the Greffer package isn't played by everybody, but it's a pretty neat inclusion, especially because you get to play Rota, which essentially gives you four, or I guess technically five copies of Rhino Heart, excluding the field spell of course but like i said the list is pretty straightforward we have three of all the tier limit monsters we have the greffer to combo with the nessie the dangers are really insane because they help you trigger all your tier limits while also helping you link climb into something like curious which can enable more fusion plays or of course establish fairy tale snow which is one of the best cards in the game right now again we're playing board breakers like dark ruler and super poly you could go the hand trap route personally i really like these because they're a little more reactive and they don't play into something like triple tactics talents some other notable things is we do have Galaxy Cyclone for Mystic Mine, as well as the Topologic Duo here in the extra deck. Not everybody plays them, but typically you'll see at least one in the extra deck. We're going to hop into some very basic combos. I'm not going to show you the most crazy things ever, but it's going to be able to give you at least a basic idea of what this deck can do. That way, when we talk about deck building and of course side decking, the cards that I'm going to suggest will at least make a little bit more sense from there. So for the first combo, I'm just going to show you what you can do with the field spell. Again, this is a bunch of board breakers in hand. So with any extenders or combo pieces after this, like the dangers, your deck could obviously go a lot further. And of course, with the dangers, you never know what you're going to draw into as well. So this deck could easily snowball out of control. But to keep things simple, I'll show you guys the bare minimum. That way you guys can kind of see what this deck is trying to do, even if it doesn't have all the combo pieces at hand. So starting things off, of course, we're going to activate the field spell to search our Rhino Heart. Rhino Heart is just a best one card combo for the deck which is why i think it's pretty neat to have the reinforcement of the army in the deck with the dark greffer as well on summon kick callus will add a tier card from deck to hand or send one to the grave if you want to continue to fusion summon this is basically the heart and soul of your deck not only searching your trap card in the form of salic but it can also search any other combo piece you might need while also being an extender by either bringing something back from the grave or out from your hand by sending a monster you control to the graveyard and that is by card effect which will trigger its second effect to help you mill five more cards potentially hitting more names. Again, this board isn't very crazy at all because, again, we just put a bunch of board breakers in our hands, but the Salak is an effect negation that will trigger to Kate Kalos, which will let you mill five cards on your opponent's turn. So, essentially, you might get lucky. You might be able to fusion into Draco Stapelia or maybe even another Kate Kalos for follow-up on your opponent's turn. Regardless, if you do hit a fusion, it's very great because also we have the field spell, which will enable you to pop a card. So, when you're playing against this deck, that is also something you have to keep in mind. Not only are you going to be disrupted with all these monster effects and these trap effects, but this field spell is really insane as well. For the next combo, I figured I'd throw a danger in. There is, again, a hundred ways this could play out depending on what you draw off of the Nessie effect. If you hit the Nessie by accident or maybe you hit some other card and summon it to the field, there is endless possibilities. So I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible and just show you one of the streamlined combos where you're going to go into a fusion and a rank four with a trap card. So starting things off, we're going to use the Nessie. Hopefully we get lucky. And in this case, we hit itself. We're going to use it to add Mothman. You could have accidentally hit the Rhino Heart, so maybe normal summoning it might have been better to start things off, especially in a hand with triple Dark Ruler no more. But again, this is just to show you the simple combos. Now, the great thing about Nessie being in the grave is the fact that it is a Dark Aqua, which has so much amazing synergy with this deck. Hands down, the best danger for the deck, obviously, is going to be Nessie, not only having the synergy as an extender, but with all the synergy that comes with the typing and attribute, this card is really insane. So after that, of course, we're going to summon the Rhino Heart, use its effect to dump a tier. Again, we have a Dark 
Aqua so we can shuffle the Nessie back to Fusion Summon to kick Kalos. This will add our trap to hand. And then now we can use the Mothman. Probably could have set the trap first, but again, it would have added a monster. We'll use it to make something like Redoer. We'll set the trap. We'll pass our turn. Again, we could have set Super Poly that we drew into as well. But again, this is just to show you a very, very basic streamlined combo. We have an effect negation that will allow us to mill five more cards. We have Redoer, which could be a very annoying card to deal with. And of course, if we had more tier limits in hand, when we use its effect, it will trigger the Rhino Heart, allowing it to bring itself back, discard whatever tier was in your hand, and now you're triggering multiple effects on your opponent's turn, putting up stuff like Draco Stapelia or maybe even a Kaleido Heart. I'm trying to keep the combos as simple as possible because there's a lot of RNG involved with this deck. But at the end of the day, I'm just trying to show you the bare minimum basic stuff this deck can do. I figured I'd show you guys another simple combo involving Dark Greffer. Again, this has a lot of synergy with Nessie specifically, but being able to send any tier limit from deck to grave as well obviously shows it has a lot of synergy. So in this combo, we're going to pitch the Nessie to special it. Nessie can now add ourselves the Jackalope, which we can then pitch right away to send a tier limit from deck to grave. This will trigger both the tier limit monster and the Jackalope we discarded. Special summoning a danger from deck, and then of course, fusion summoning from there. In this case, we're going to go ahead and bring out a Mothman and a kit Kalos and then again the kit will add us the trap and now we have two level four so we can make something like Abyss Dweller or in this case we threw out a Time Thief Redoer. Again basically the same thing but it just goes to show how easy it is to make rank fours in this deck which when you're playing in the mirror match Abyss Dweller is an insane card so whether you're playing this and you're playing mirrors and you want to know how to beat it or if you're just playing a deck that does play rank fours inherently then just know Abyss Dweller is going to be really insane. I got one more Greffer combo I wanted to show you except for this time instead of going the rank four route we're going to go ahead and link climb into curious this is actually one of the key facets of this deck but just like last time we're going to start off ditching the nessie for the greffer letting us search jackalope and then pitching the jackalope to dump a tier monster this time when we use their effects we're not going to summon mothman we're actually going to summon another nessie which we'll talk about in a sec and then of course we're going to use the tier limit effect here to shuffle back the nessie but instead of going to kick kalos instead we're going to go into garura garura will hit the field and then of course a second nessie comes out the main reason we do this is not only does it give us the required materials for our curious but it re-establishes nessie in the grave so that way when we go to dump a tier limit with curious we already have a dark aqua online once again one thing that's really cool about this combo also is now we're triggering the garura effect to draw a free card and then like i said we're going to use the curious we're going to shuffle those back to make it kalos we're going to mill three more cards we did get lucky here and hit another tier we're going to add a trap and in this case we get a free draco stapelia and again i just think this showcases how amazing this deck can be because you could potentially hit more and more names throughout your combo which really lets you snowball out of control there's probably a few other lines we could have done with this to be completely honest but i just really wanted to turbo out into curious to really showcase what utility it offers because again if we had any other normal summon or any other tier in hand then we could have used it to dump snow instead and kind of combo off from there so again those combos weren't too flashy but hopping back over on the deck list i added a couple of cards in the main and into the side deck this is just to give you some ideas of cards you could main deck potentially if you're expecting a lot of tier limits which is a very popular deck but also giving you some awesome side deck options that I personally think are really good. Before hopping into the cards, obviously, first things first, cards like Abyss Dweller, like I mentioned, very insane against this deck. Turning off the grave is really insane. And I think it's very easy to notice that Kick Kalos is a very pivotal card for any combo this deck does. With the dangers, you don't need to resolve this card, but it definitely helps push any combo you are trying to do through. So having cards in your main deck like Infinite Impermanence definitely helps with not only stopping the card, but it permanently negates its effect for the turn so it can't pop itself to mill five cards as well and summon and extend from there. Imperm is one of the best hand traps of the format right now so if you are taking the hand trap route make sure you're playing this card but one of the great things about Imperm is you don't have to be playing a hand trap deck to be abusing it it's just a very great going second card acting like a pseudo chalice but in addition it plays around a card like triple tactics talents which is not only very good against tier limit but just in general hand traps can be very annoying for any deck so having access to a card like this not only pushes your first turn combos through but of course can really break these tier limit decks boards apart but going back to the hand trap department some of my favorite hand traps against this deck is bell and crow i'm pretty sure most of you are aware that dd crow is really insane because these cards try to shuffle themselves back in the deck to fusion summon if you crow the tier limit monster whose effect is activated then it won't resolve because it has to go back into the deck to resolve bell works in the like except for instead of banishing it obviously it just keeps it in the grave and negates the activation so that's pretty neat but the one perk about the bell is it's a very very versatile card right now. 
not only stopping cards like Call by the Grave, but there are so many applications that this card could come up, even stopping cards like Fairy Tale Snow, Sprite Elf, totally awesome. There's just so many different things you could use this on in the meta today, and that's why I personally think Ghost Spell in the main deck is a super solid choice, because not only is it something that can stop your opponent from comboing, but it's also a way to push your place through as well, so it's pretty neat. I already touched on Triple Tactics Talents, but I personally love this card to death. It's one of those cards, though, where the more relevant hand traps are, the better this card is, but even without hand traps in the mix, Going second, this card is very easy to resolve. One quick note is these tier limit monsters do have effects when they're sent to the grave as well by card effects, so being able to steal them with triple tactics talents and then link them off makes it to where not only are you obviously removing the problem card, but you're preventing your opponent from snowballing out of control, especially with Kaleida Heart being able to bring itself back from the grave, dump more tier limits to fusion summon, maybe make another interruption like Draco Stapelia. And of course, this card can also spin cards your opponent controls whenever an Aqua is sent from deck to grave, or whenever it's special summoned as well. So this this card is a very powerful card for the deck, and plus it can't be used for a fusion summon, so you know you can't super poly it. Speaking of Super Poly, before going on to the rest of the cards, Super Poly is obviously very good at breaking boards in the game today, so if you have room for stuff like Garura and Mud Dragon, you definitely should consider main decking this card. Dark Ruler No More needs really no explanation, obviously a card that can just turn off the whole field is very good, but just keep in mind when your opponent has something like Salix Set, just know if you do Dark Ruler the field and maybe turn off a Kaleido Heart and a Draco Stapelia, your opponent can still flip Salix and negate an effect, and then obviously if they had the Kaleido Heart, now it gets to bring itself back from the grave and then dump another tier, allowing it to fusion summon again. And of course, when this comes back, then you spin a card. So there's still multiple interruptions to have to play through even after Dark Ruling. So you really have to pick and choose when you want to activate Dark Ruler, but just know holding it and timing it correctly is a very powerful card against this deck. But again, this deck can play through Dark Ruler a lot better than something like Sprite. Now for another going second pseudo board breaker card, Mystic Mine. Obviously, this card is insane. Mystic Mine obviously can turn off a lot of monster effects so enabling you to play through a board, but also since the tier limit deck mills 10 to 20 cards in their first turn, it's going to be very easy to deck them out if they don't have a way to out this card, which is why this build was playing a Galaxy Cyclone. One other note I wanted to talk about is the Adventure Package. Not every deck can play this, but if you are playing a deck that can, I highly suggest playing it because it is so good against tier limits. Some builds do put up Omni Negates where they're playing like frogs or punks, but more times than not, they're going in a route like this. Rite of Aramisir is obviously a powerful card putting up something like Griffin Rider your first turn and helping push through hand traps while you're trying to combo, but going second having access to Draco back is so good at breaking this board. Spinning back any problematic card, making sure you're not triggering graveyard effects at the same time is so good, all while generating free advantage with tokens and bodies on the field to link climb with. Personally, this is still one of my favorite engines in the game, and I think while we have it, we should definitely abuse it. Now hopping over to the side, like I said, most decks aren't going to be putting up the Omni Negates, but they are going to put up a bunch of interruptions. So having a card like Evenly Match is so good because you know it's going to resolve and it deals with so many of the interruptions that you're going to run into. It really puts the tier limit player in a hard spot where they have to choose what interruption they want to keep, all while dealing with multiple interruptions and preventing the trap card from being live because you both obviously need the trap card and a tier limit on the field. So really the only way they play around this is maybe having a Havanus in hand, which is something you need to keep in mind when breaking the board. But all in all, Evenly Match is probably one of the best tempo swingers against this deck. And so if your deck can play it, I definitely think you should cite it because again, it does do good things against back row decks as well. So for me personally, Evenly Match, number one pick in the side deck for obvious reasons. Another board breaker card you can consider is like Lava Golem or even Sphere Modes, another card you could play. Some decks really need their normal summon, so you can't play this card. So similar to the Adventure Package, you kind of have to pick what deck you'd want to play this in. We talked a little bit about hand traps, but one of the best for obvious reason is Dimensional Shifter. Not every deck can play this, but like I said, this deck is so heavily reliant on the graveyard, and yes, while they can still throw dangers out on the field, they're going to be losing all the other cards by getting them banished. And in addition, sure, they might Link Climb, but what really is the scariest board they could put out. Maybe a rank four, maybe a topologic bomber. So since Shifter is such an amazing card, I figured I'd mention DeFi as well. It's a one of, it's just something to consider. A great floodgate to side going first, because again, if there are decks that are playing hand traps, this can turn off a good portion of hand traps in the game as well. Personally, I think this is one of my favorite cards to side if your deck can afford it. But again, it's a one of, so if you don't side it, it's really not the worst card to leave out. If you want a really efficient card at skipping your opponent's turn, I'm pretty sure you've all seen this, Artifact Scythe. Obviously, if you're playing a deck that plays Dagda, this is really insane, but normally we're just 
just going to side it alongside Sanctum. A lot of people have been cutting Ash Blossom, so more times than not, this will resolve. Really, after this hits the field, you're just worried about Imperm. But again, this isn't going to be the only thing on your field, so more times than not, you're going to have interruptions anyway. But just know, obviously, Scythe is just going to skip their turn for the most part. And all they can really do is maybe set the trap and maybe set Super Poly to hopefully live the next turn. One other card I forgot that I left out here is Dimensional Barrier. This card is very good, very similar to Scythe by being able to turn off an entire mechanic. I think this is very insane, especially against like the branded variants of this deck. Turning off fusions is one of the best things you can do against this deck, but the deck has evolved to where link summoning is a big part of its combos. So just know, even though D-Barrier does turn off the best part of the deck, the deck can definitely still play even under it. A couple other notable blowout cards being Summon Limit and Rivalry of the Warlords. Great floodgates if you're playing a deck that can abuse it. Obviously, Summon Limit limits them to two summons. They can play around this by going into the Kaleido Heart. So you want to make sure you activate this card while they're in the middle of their combo. Don't just shotgun it because then they can try to out it right there. Rivalry is the same. If your deck can support it, I definitely suggest you should be playing it. This is one of the best floodgates in the meta right now. So many decks are playing a variety of types. And again, just like all the other cards we've mentioned previously, this is not going to be be the only card you use so this alongside whatever your board was you established is obviously going to be one killer board you can make against this deck because even though they play a bunch of aquas and again can collide a heart out of it just like summon limit you want to wait to activate it in the middle of their combo that way you can clear most of the board and really prevent them from making collide heart to out it one other quick note i wanted to talk about a pointer i just think this is a side deck staple in general not every deck needs to play this card but in this format so far this has personally been one of my favorite cards to side in every deck that I've been playing. Hand knowledge is so important. Picking out board breakers, picking out combo pieces, this card gives you it all. And when your board puts up a bunch of interruptions, knowing exactly how to sequence those interruptions to just guarantee your opponent doesn't play is an FTK in itself. And for that reason, I personally think if you can fit this in your side, you definitely should. This card's insane. So that's it for this quick little rundown on the deck, some basic combos, and some different tips that I would do to beat the deck. Maybe you learned something new, maybe you saw some of the stuff you were already aware of, but regardless, if you know something, or maybe I forgot to mention something in the video, comment down below, let everybody else know. The meta has been so much fun to play, except for Mystic Mind, but hopefully this video gave you some ideas of what to do going forward. Here's hoping to see you guys next time. Peace.